joined with my student, Arun, uh, who has recently graduated. So this talk about is about race detection from incomplete traces. So in the previous three talks, I hope you, know, you have been convinced about data races. That to me, I, I think that's one of the fundamental challenges in concurrency. So of course, previous approaches, yeah, so many of them are race detection, static approaches and dynamic approaches. For example, the lockstep algorithm, which is very classical and is highly influential uh, in this community. So in general, we know that static approaches and the classical lockstep-based algorithm can produce false positives, meaning that they are imprecise. And we also have several classical approaches which are previously known to be precise including happens before, causal precy, and the maximal causality. However, in this paper, I want to show that although these approaches are precise, but all these approaches are based on a very strong assumption, which is they need a full trace. They assume every critical event in the trace is captured. Unfortunately, this is not true in practice because missing events are very common in practice. There are just so many examples, at least a few of them here. Firstly, unavailability of whole system. Real world programs have external libraries, have private code, have runtime generated code, which cause problems when you are trying to trace them, you are trying to capture the runtime event. And sometimes you have limitations in your tracing facilities. For example, when the, the whole system has multiple languages, you have, you have to rely on the tracing capability to track different language features. Sometimes they could be very difficult, such as when you are having Java applications with Java native interfaces. And another big reason is performance slowdown. In order to capture the full trace, usually it incurs a large runtime overhead. And for a large class of applications, you cannot sacrifice this performance slowdown, especially for those performance sensitive codes. And sometimes you may favor excluding some code from being traced. In some applications, for example, when you are debugging something, you want to exclude those non-relevant codes so that you can more be more focused. But all these missing events may lead to imprecise result by the existing precise algorithm. Let me give you some examples. So this is a very simple example. There's two threads. There's a write to x by thread one and a read to x by thread two and you can see this gray area, something's missing here. So thread one calls a missing method one, take parameter y, and thread two take uh, par uh, execute missing method two, take parameter y. Okay, here's a question. Is there a race on x? Yes or no? Maybe a false positive. The reason is, if the missing events in this missing method introduce synchronization, then there is a false positive. For example, when y is volatile, and inside the missing method y, you assign y to one, and in missing method two, you have a while loop which checks the uh, value of y. If it's zero, it will continue waiting. So essentially, this behavior introduces happens before between write x and read x. Okay, so this is a very simple example. But this happens a lot in practice. Many of 
you, I believe, already know what threat sanitizer is, which is an industrial quality risk detector, which is used regularly in this open source project. In, for example, in Google uh, Chrome browsers, in testing, uh, in detecting races in Firefox and so on. And this is quoted from the official documentation of TSAN. The blacklist functions are not instrumented, and this can lead to false positive due to missynchronization. And let's see another real example. And this is actually a popular account benchmark, which is used very frequently in previous studies. And this example, the highlight is this part from line 10 to 14. I graded this part because this part introduces a synchronization. Basically, you check each thread in the while loop to see whether thread has been terminated or not. If yes, then you check the other thread. If not, then you assign the loop I index to be zero and you repeat again. So <coughs> because this thread is a live function, is a Java native interface call. So existing approaches, when tracing this external function, they don't know what happened inside this function. So all the events in this function are missed. And because of this, all the three precise algorithms happens before causal receipt and maximum precise, all report false positive. Actually, the only real race in this example is between line five and line eight, which concurrently update the bank total variable, but all the others caused by this part and this part are false positive. And we did more experiments. So we tested on uh, the popular XLIP IDE benchmark, which is a very large. And we randomly true classed it. And run this precise race detection algorithm based uh, on some traces. And we, <coughs> when we don't exclude any classes, all the three precise algorithms report races. And MC is more powerful, but none of them report false positive. But when we exclude more classes, we find all the three precise algorithms generate many false positives. So the highlight of this work is we developed a tool for our disk race detection on incomplete trace, which is precise and maximal with regards to missing events. Precise means no false positive. Every detector race is a true race from an incomplete trace. Maximal, the same guarantee as maximal causality, impossible to detect more races based on the same incomplete trace and the sequential consistency. So the limitation of this work is we have assumption on sequential consistency. So let's, before I present our approach, let's start with a very intuitive idea a simple barrier approach, which is mi model every missing event as a barrier. For example, here we don't know what, what happened in mission one and mission two. Just model it as a barrier. So you won't detect any races between this and this. It is precise but too conservative. Because what if mission one and mission two are both empty? then the real race on X will be missed. So the key observation of this work is, let's use the runtime data as invocation site to approximate missing events. Although we don't know what happened inside missing events, we know when we call this missing method, what we have at runtime. In this case, we know both of these two methods reference Y here. So these two missing methods may use Y to do synchronization. However, if these two missing methods do not access any common address, suppose this missing method access X and this missing method access zero, uh, uh, Z, 
They, they won't introduce any synchronization. So that's the key insight of this work. They must not introduce any synchronization if these two method methods do not accept any common identity. So we introduce this barrier pair model in which we introduce two new events for a missing method. One is method begin, the other is method end. And for each barrier pair, there are several attributes. A very important attribute of, of this missing uh, of barrier pair is reachable addresses, which represent Y in that previous example. But again, Y can be an object which can reference many, many others, which we have to capture all of them. So which is a set of memory addresses can be reached by the missing method. And when two barrier pairs do not have, uh, uh, do have overlapping addresses, in the reach in, uh, reachable addresses, then we assume they can introduce synchronization, which is conservative. However, if they do not share any common addresses, then there's no way for them to introduce synchronization. So here, here is an example. As you can see, there are several missing uh, meshes. Uh, so there are several barrier pairs in this example. And from A to C, because there is a re common reachable address on Y, so introduce it happens before on A to C, similarly for others. However, if you look at C and E, they access different addresses, so there won't be anything happens before synchronization between them. However, in, you, in order to realize this barrier pair approach, there are two central challenges. Both of them are very challenging. The first one is how to ensure precision and maximality. And there are many corner cases you have to consider. The other one is you have to compute these reachable addresses. And how to compute them safely and efficiently. Let me uh, try to give you some more examples to convince you this is a hard problem. Let's look at two barrier pairs. In this case, these two barrier pairs are overlapping in time, not only on the address, but in time. Okay? So they, they both access Y, but also there are some time overlapping between these barrier pairs. So how do you introduce happens before edges between them? You cannot simply add happens before from begin to begin or from end to end, because otherwise, you can still report arrays on read X and write X. But this is a false positive. <coughs> so in this case, we have to add multiple happen before issues between overlapping barrier pairs. Let's see another example. Remember, you can observe events between the barrier pairs. For example, when you're working on missing methods, but that missing method may have callback functions. These callback functions may trigger events that you can observe. For example, here, write x. In this case, how do you add happens before between them? You have to add multiple happens before, not only between the barrier pair events, but also the observed event between the barrier pairs. Here's another example. Suppose non nothing is missing in this method, then you have to add happens before between the barrier pair events and the ordinary events you have observed. And here's another example in which we want to show that although this barrier pair and this barrier pair do not show any common addresses, but they can still be a happen before between them because happen before can be transitive. I mean, there's so many challenging issues. And also, global variables. I'm sure you are curious about this. And this is a fundamental challenge. What if some global variables are used for synchronization are inside this missing method? What shall we do with them? Right? In, the, in, the, in the extreme case, the global variables are just something that we have no knowledge about, and they are just directly accessing the missing event. And in that situation, 
we didn't find any better solution other than let's get help from the developer. Let's use synchronization, uh, use the annotations. So we provide a simple annotation, very simple. So the developer just annotate a variable to be global. That means, hey, this variable x, which is global, will be accessed directly, remember, directly inside the missing method. But if x is not accessed directly, that's fine. Our pros can still detect these races very precisely, as long as there's a callback function that is executed from the missing method that actually uses x. Our algorithm is like this. So we extend the maximal causality model, which is actually used by the maximal causality risk detection approach in previous work. And if we extend this with missing method, with our barrel pair model, so we encode the maximal causality model and the barrel pair models as constants. So basically, which uh, includes the five items here. And uh, from two to five, they are common to maximal causality model. What's new here is we have to add the barrel pair constants. And basically, the barrel pair constant base capture the happens to basis among missing events themselves and between the missing and observed events. <sighs> Let's see an example here. The same example on the account benchmark. So from this example, suppose we execute this program and we get a trace like this. Look at here from 17 to 21. These are the barrel pair events we introduced. So from this barrel pair event, we'll include a set of new constants modeling the happen before between them. So in addition, we have this maximum causality constants together we can detect all the races, all the real races precisely. For example, here, all these other races, except this one, is false positive. So in this approach, our approach, barrel pair detects only real race in that current example and no false positive. <coughs> okay, another problem. How to compute the reachable addresses efficiently? So in general, this is Java program, so every object, you know, we can trace the references of the object transitively, and which can be formed actually as an object reference tree. For example, you have object O, and O has a field F, F can reference another object O2, then you have to do that transitively. Of course, you want to break the, the back edges. So this, this become a tree. So nodes represent objects and edge reference field re uh, references in Java program. And we can compute this with Java reflection, which is sound, but expensive. Because the missing methods are frequent, and uh, if the tree, or the, the object reference tree is very large. So we have developed an optimization in order to improve performance of this. The key idea of this is very simple. Actually, we don't need to, to compute an OR tree every time we see an a missing method. Instead, we only need to compute ORT once for each object, and then we update the tree upon rise to field reference. If this is not very frequent, then we are good. And if the, this is not inside the missing method, we're also good. And if this is not uh, something that introduced synchronization, we're also good. The only condition for this approach, optimized to be unsound, is when the rise, when like this, are missed, and O2 is created in the missing method, and O2 is used for synchronization. But all these conditions, in order to satisfy all of them, in practice, is very difficult. So actually, in our experiments, in practice, we didn't find you know, any violation of this condition. So it is sound, in practice. Okay, evaluation. So this is Java application based on RV predict, uh, which is risk detection on MC. We compared the barrier pair with happens before causal precede maximal causality and also the simple barrier approach. And based on two, ma two kinds of randomly excluding classes and also excluding all synchronization methods on several large applications. 
And we found that all this, this previous precise algorithm is called false positive. And barrier pairs compared to simple barrier, which is very conservative, detect three times more races without false positive. And the two thirds of the missed races, the barrier pair, are due to analysis conservancy. And the runtime performance, with and without our reachable address computation, <coughs> the runtime overhead is 4% uh, to 13%. Um, <coughs> but without the uh, optimization, is uh, uh, more, a lot more larger. And the lock size with optimization on these seven benchmarks is uh, 100 megabytes. Okay, so here is the results. On the Eclipse benchmark, we randomly extrude classes from the, uh, uh, the trace. And we find that the has to for all record many false positives. Uh, uh, simple barrier and barrier pair detect no false positive, and barrier pair detect more races than simple barrier. And this table is the main table summarizing all the interesting results. And it may be difficult to uh, digest uh, here in a minute, but uh, let me sum try to summarize. So all these uh, method, precise method detect uh, um, you know, false positive hundreds of them. And the barrier pair detects um, all true races, a lot more than a uh, simple barrier and no false positive. And barrier pair misses some true races, okay? And the uh, uh, major uh, majority of them due to analysis of the image. And the results are consistent with and without reachable address optimization. And how about the performance of doing this runtime uh, reachable address computation? So we try to uh, pick a CPU intensive uh, uh, benchmark, which is Dallin. Um, and we exclude common J JDK libraries. We try to exclude some uh, packages from uh, this uh, uh, program. For example, XPath, Harness, uh, XML, Dallin. And we try to uh, have different combinations of these exclusions. And uh, <coughs> in general, with all this uh, uh, libraries excluded runtime overhead with optimization actually reduced uh, from uh, more than 100% on average to uh, around 10%. Um, and log size also significantly reduced. All right, I think I can stop here and summarize it. So we introduced a new approach powered by a new model called barrier pair, which can guarantee a race detecting technique to be precise and maximal. And we have conducted extensive experimental uh, evaluation on real world large systems and showing the race detection ability with no false positive. Thank you. <laughs>